We're going to look at the metabolism of alcohol in humans and predominantly that refers to ethanol. So ethanol is known as drinking alcohol. So it's produced by yeasts as a fermentation product. So it's what we find in alcohol in alcoholic beverages such as wine and beer. So when we think of ethanol, so we think of this formula and this product is broken down in a simple pathway that just has two steps or two enzymes. So we start off with our ethanol, which we can write like this. And this is broken down by an enzyme known as alcohol dehydrogenase. So here is our enzyme process, alcohol dehydrogenase. And if you remember, if we have an enzyme known as a dehydrogenase, it's oxidizing something. And when a product is being oxidized, something else is being produced um, or reduced. Here we have our ethanol and our product is acetaldehyde. And along the way, we are adding electrons to NAD+. So this is a cofactor you've probably heard of before to give us NADH. Now remember that when we're transferring a pair of electrons, what we're thinking of is we're actually um, including a hydrogen. So we're thinking of having two hydrogens and this gives us two protons um, and a pair of electrons. So when we talk about a pair of electrons um, being attached to our cofactor, we also have two protons. So you'll often see the second one written like this as well. So that's our first step of um, oxidizing uh, ethanol. And this occurs in the cytoplasm. And which cells does it occur in? Predominantly in liver cells. So the metabolism of our alcohol is occurring in the cytoplasm of liver cells. So this is our first step with the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. And then we need to um, further oxidize our, our acetaldehyde. And this um, is done by acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Um, and along the way, we are also going to get NAD plus being used, NADH. And we're going to have produced acetate. And this can be further used to give us carbon dioxide and water. So this is our second enzyme, and this reaction mainly occurs in the mitochondria. So in eukaryotic cells and in human cells, we have these organelles that are mitochondria where this is occurring. So we'd have two enzymes that carry this out. So if you look at this reaction, we need a supply of NAD+. So NAD+, is what limits our availability of what, how, um, the reaction can occur. And we're also producing NADH. Now this NADH becomes, um, gives off its electrons or is reoxidized in the electron transport chain. So we're getting or generating energy, a change of energy in this reaction. So ethanol is actually thought of as a fourth macronutrient because we can obtain energy from this molecule. If we have a large amount of NADH, that means we have other processes that are being regulated. So when alcohol metabolism is being carried out in the liver, we have inhibition of gluconeogenesis. And we also have inhibition of um, fatty acid oxidation.
So if you think of um, gluconeogenesis, this is where we take our lactate and use it to um, generate glucose. So if someone is been going for a run or doing some exercise and they drink beer at the end, um, they run the risk of being hypoglycemic because they're inhibiting um, the production of glucose. Fatty acid oxidation um, is being inhibited and that means we're promoting fatty acid synthesis. So if someone is eating um, high fat foods while drinking or consuming alcohol, we have a buildup or an accumulation of triacylglycerides in the liver that can lead to fatty acids, um, fatty liver because of the increase in fatty acids and TAGs. There also can be some variants of these two enzymes. So remember our two enzymes are alcohol dehydrogenase and acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. And in different groups, different population groups or um, ethnic groups, we can find different variants or predominance of variants of these um, types of enzymes. So one variant that we see um, is an alcohol dehydrogenase where the variant can have an increased Vmax. And if we think of that, that means our enzyme is really being more efficient and it's taking more ethanol and it is producing more acetaldehyde. And this means we have an increase in this product in people with this variant of the enzyme. And this is a toxic product. Um, people that have a buildup of acetaldehyde tend to get flushed and can have a, um, their heart rate higher and it can be quite unpleasant. So interestingly, it was thought that people with a mutation or a variant in this gene where they have a higher Vmax are not often alcoholics because it's quite unpleasant for them to be consuming alcohol. There's another variant where we have a mutation in um, L ALDH and this um, means that the enzyme has a different um, KM, okay, so an increased KM. And that means it needs a higher concentration of the substrate um, in order to obtain significant catalysis, so a higher concentration of acetaldehyde. Now in this mutation, it means that the mitochondrial version of the, of the protein isn't functioning and they are relying on a cytoplasm version um, that has this differing KM. And again, that leads to an increase in acetaldehyde um, because the enzyme is working slower and we're getting um, an accumulation of acetaldehyde. So those are some of the variants we can get in the two genes or two proteins that are being produced in this pathway. One of the other interesting things that um, we can see with this is to do with methanol. So um, methanol is probably something you've heard of. Um, sometimes in the news you hear about people having methanol poisoning. So methanol is also um, broken down by the same pathway that we have here. But when we have uh, methanol being broken down, the product here is formaldehyde. And you've probably known that formaldehyde and also formic acid are very toxic. And if we have an uh, amount of this being built up, um, that can cause death and it can cause blindness. So interestingly, if someone has had methanol poisoning and it's recognized earlier, the enzyme has a better or binds better to ethanol than it does to methanol. So what is normally given as a treatment here is actually ethanol. So we can actually give, this is our bottle of alcohol, it's not given in that form, but we can actually give um, limited doses of ethanol um, as a treat, therapeutic treatment to methanol poisoning so we can control the rate at which these toxic products are being produced in the body to reduce um, the poisoning that's, that occurs as a result.